Welcome back to another round of statics review. So um, if you are in Engineering Science 2143 at Oklahoma State University, um, you are probably watching these videos as you review statics concepts needed for strength. Um, if you're not, welcome. Um, this module that we're working on today is, um, I'm just calling it compound beams. And from statics, we looked at frames and we looked at machines and um, normally we do work with these. You can think of a pair of scissors. Um, I'm not real good at drawing, but here would be like the, whoops, little things. They'd be pinned together and I can take this apart at a pin. Um, I note when I have scissors and I open and close them, I have rotation about this pin, but if I try to pull it apart or push it, um, it doesn't come apart. And so an important thing about these internal pins is that they don't resist moment, but they do transfer shear and normal forces, okay? When we looked at frames, they might be something like this, okay? You might have something like this. Um, these are load-bearing. Normally, we see these as being load-bearing. So if you're a civil student or construction or architecture, um, you may see this more in applications later on. If you are mechanical or aerospace or biosystems, biosystems probably does both, um, you might be seeing uh, machines. And scissors are probably the easiest little thing to think about um, when we're talking about machines. And I think for everybody, you can see how those two pieces are pinned together. So they, are, they allow rotation so I can cut the scissors. Okay, but I can't like move it or take it apart or, or bend it. Um, oh, I actually have some scissors. What do you know? Okay, so where I have this pin, um, rotation occurs. Okay, so I can do work. I can cut the paper, um, but I can't pull it apart or push it apart. So I am transferring a normal and shear forces from this right hand to the left hand through that pin. Okay. So that is very, very, very important to note. Um, so I just call them compound beams because I'm just used to working with these types of systems, but I don't want you all in other disciplines to feel like you're left out um, because uh, we actually see the same concepts. Um, your, your figures future may just look a little bit different, okay? So um, we talked about simply supported and we had a pin and a roller and we've talked about um, a simple fixed. And the things to note is that with each of these systems, we have three unknowns and three equations of equilibrium. Okay, it has to have three unknowns or it's not stable. If we took this away and made it a skateboard, we'd have one, two unknowns and this would roll down the street. Okay, if this were a pin instead of fixed, so two unknowns, it would just belong flop down like a door, okay? So we are still gonna be working with systems where even though we have more than four unknowns, we will have these internal pins that let us take the system apart and create additional free body diagrams so that we can um, have a solution, okay? So if you're looking in your module, um, the information, you guys can see a free body diagram and it's a cut apart beam. And if we just go back and draw the beam, then it's gonna look something like this. So we have a load W, which is 10 kilonewtons per meter, okay? And we have 30 kilonewtons as a force. And I can see that this distance is 10 meters. And I can see that we have a roller here, okay? And this distance is four meters and four meters. And from this internal pin at B, we have 1.5 meters and 2.5 meters between the roller and the internal pin for this force. So I know this is kind of messy. So at A, at A we have fixed. And at fixed we have three unknowns, okay? At D, at D, I have a roller, and at a roller, I have one unknown. So we've got four unknowns. Four is greater than three, okay? So I have to have some way to take this apart. I cannot just cut it where I want to. I have to take it apart, much like if I laid these scissors out on a table, 
I could unscrew it and I could actually see, well, here's one part of it and here's the other part of it and right here where they transfer, okay, that pin is gonna have X and Y components. So I have to have a place that I can literally, if I laid this on my table, unscrew that and have two halves of the beam, okay? So I have an internal pin and that internal pin is at B. So that gives us plus one. So we now have three equations of equilibrium plus an internal pin, which equals the four unknowns that we have. I cannot solve this using equilibrium. And some of you are gonna say, why can't you just sum moments about somewhere? Well, because I have this unknown moment here at A. And so if I sum moments anywhere, I have to include that unknown moment at A. So at A, which is fixed, I could have an X component, I could have a Y component, and I could have an M a moment. So it's just like our diving board. Here at D, because it's a roller, I can only have that vertical component because that's perpendicular to my surface, okay? So too many unknowns. At B, I can break it apart. And if I look at B, I have to draw everything that's to the left of B. So we can just, if you need to visually cover it up, and I can see that I have AX, I have AY, I have my moment at A, this is 10 meters. At the pin, I can transfer a normal force and I can transfer my shear force, okay? And this was 10 kilonewtons per meter. Now on the right side of the pin, I have that same normal force and that same shear force but we need to draw them equal and opposite because when I stick this back together, I have, a, I have a normal that's going to the right, which is positive. I have a normal going to the left, which is negative. And when I put the positive and negative back together, I have zero, which makes sense. When I look at this overall, overall free body diagram, I don't see those internal forces. I never, ever, ever, ever put this on your noggin. Don't ever include the internal forces at your pin in your overall external forces and reactions. We only see those forces when I take my little screwdriver and take my system apart and I lay it on my workbench. So now I can finish drawing. So yeah, we're gonna cover it up. And I have 30 kilonewtons and this is 1.5 meters. I have dy, which is four meters and four meters to the end of the beam. And then I also have that uniform load that is 10 kilonewtons per meter, okay? So this is how I came up with that free body diagram, okay? Again, these are my internal forces. And I'm only gonna see them when I've taken my system apart. Once I put these pieces back together, put that little screw back in there, that little hinge, that pin, whatever you want to call it, then I have my overall free body diagram. I do not see those internal forces. Do not include them. Okay, here, overall, I just have external loads and those external reactions keeping the beam in place. When I need to take it apart because I need that extra free body diagram because four is greater than three, okay, then I can show the internals. And I have to make sure that I show the internals as equal and opposite. Okay, the next video will actually work through this problem.